Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. A long time ago, I created a video about how I benchmark games. It was using Fraps along with uh, Fraps to analyze the data that came out of the Fraps program. Now in 2019 though, Fraps is really long in the tooth. It hasn't been updated in forever. It's very hit or miss with newer games. So I wanna update that tutorial with the software that I'm starting to use now that because mostly because I just became aware of it recently, but randomly because I happened to see a Twitter post about it and it seems to work really, really well for DX11 and DX12 games, as well as Vulcan games, which are, you know, every single new game on the market. So we're gonna take a look at this and uh, it's called OCAT. I'll link it in the description down below in case you're interested in downloading it for yourself, but let's hop into the tutorial and see just how this software works. So once you have OCAT installed, you're gonna see it just sort of sitting on your desktop when you first open it up. And in the overlay menu here, you have a few different options that may be of interest. You have the overlay position. This is gonna be where on your screen the overlay actually appears. I typically leave it in the top left, but maybe your game doesn't uh, have a lot going on in the top right corner, but a lot of important information is in the top left corner. So you can just shuffle that around wherever you happen to need it. Uh, you can enable the overlay when OCAT starts, which I definitely do because one of the reasons I like this particular program is it gives me a visual while I'm playing my games as to how well it's performing. Then there are these hotkeys which enable different visibility things on the screen in the overlay, whether it be the actual overlay itself, there's a graph, and then there's this weird color bar that I never really use, and I'll show you why when I get around to it, but I don't know that it gives me a lot of important information, so I typically leave that one off. Now moving over to the capture uh, menu selection here and the sort of uh, menu bar, you can actually start capturing a benchmark with the F10 hotkey, and of course you can change that however you want. You can set the capture time, its default is 60 seconds, but of course you can add whatever number you want there, or maybe you don't want it to automatically stop a benchmark, so you type in something like 90,000 there, so that you can have total control over when your benchmark actually stops. I'm gonna set that back to 60. And of course, uh, the capture hotkey also ends the benchmark early if you want it to end early. So that has a dual function. It's more like a capture toggle hotkey than anything. You can delay the start in any number of seconds. For the moment, I'm gonna ignore these two tabs. The launch app tab, I never really use, though you could definitely play around with that a little bit. But the visualize tab is actually somewhat useful and we'll come back to that here in a bit. Now to start with here, we're just gonna open up Heaven Benchmark and you'll notice as soon as the benchmark uh, just opens up, not even before it's actually started running, but while it's loading, and I just sort of move that window around here, uh, the overlay is up here in the top left, and like I said, you can toggle different aspects of it with these different hotkeys. You can completely disable it if you want, or completely sort of hide it, and then bring it back with those hotkeys. And then that weird bar on the left that I was talking about is the F8 key, and it gives you this light indicator, but I'm not really sure exactly what the indications there are. So I just leave that one off altogether. Now to start a benchmark, you just hit the F10 key, and the nice thing about this particular piece of software is that it, first of all, works great with DX11, DX12, and Vulcan, so all new titles are gonna work great with it, but it also gives you an audible tone when you actually start and end a benchmark, so you're not sort of flying blind here like you might be with MSI, Afterburner, along with Rivatuner, where you think you hit the hotkey, and you're not 100% sure, so maybe you hit it again and actually disable the benchmark when it was actually already running. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the F10 hotkey so you can actually see the visible indicator as well as hear the tone indicator when you hit it. And with that, you actually get to see the red dot so you know you're capturing. It will run for 60 seconds because that's the total amount of time that I have it set to run for, but you can of course end it early by hitting the F10 key again, which I'm gonna do now. And of course, when it ends, it does give you some basic statistics about the benchmark, though these bottom two numbers are in milliseconds for frame times. Uh, that information is okay as far as the average FPS goes, but to really dive into your benchmark, you need to open up the Excel spreadsheets that it generates, and we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So now that we're in the uh, captures folder for this particular benchmarking tool, you're gonna see a couple of different file types. First of all, the performance summary combines all of the different benchmarking runs that you have 
in this program into one file. So you can actually see a summary of all your benchmarks. And then each time you run a benchmark, it generates a new benchmark file for just that particular run. So let's start with this summary file. And you'll notice that both the times I've run this Heaven benchmark in this particular tool, it has both of those listed out. It gives me my average frame rate, and then it gives me my average frame times, my 5% low frame times, 1% lows, and 0.1% low frame times, as well as all the system information that I have for this particular system, which is really useful for comparing runs over a long span of time. Maybe you make a RAM upgrade and you wanna see how that upgrade actually affects your system. So you leave this file alone, you make your upgrade, and then it will reflect in the system RAM, but then you can run the same benchmarks over again and just at a glance see exactly how that upgrade affected your performance in a variety of different games. So I really like this file because it just keeps that running list of everything that I've ever benchmarked using this tool. And of course you can always clear these numbers and it'll regenerate a new file if you delete the file altogether. So now let's hop over into the uh, actual benchmark file itself for this specific run. And you'll see the difference being, or at least the biggest difference being that we have charted every single frame in the benchmark in this spreadsheet. Now, what's of interest here to most people, I would say, is gonna, again, gonna be these uh, frame time ratings between frame to frame. And the nice thing that you can do with these is you can actually highlight an entire column and insert a simple chart to see exactly what your frame time chart would look like. And we'll see that it's actually pretty smooth with a couple of very large spikes. Those would be seen as stutters to the viewer. But other than that, this, uh, this particular benchmark apparently ran pretty well, but there is an easier way to actually take a look at that exact same information. And the way to do that is pull up OCAT again and go over to the visualize tab, which we're already on, and we're gonna select the file for output and click visualize. And now that we can actually see the graph of the frame times again, we see those spikes that we saw in the Excel version of this. But then if you go over to capture statistics, you can even cycle through several different metrics that are recorded on this particular benchmark, whether it be 99th percentile, the missed frames, which in our case, we saw none in this particular run, average FPS and all kinds of different numbers there. You can just cycle through all of the, what I would call the most important statistics from these benchmarks. And really the last thing I just wanna say is OCAT is a very user-friendly program. Seems to be extremely lightweight. I've had no problems with it running in modern games that are running DX11, 12 or Vulkan APIs. So it seems to have great compatibility there. And it's just a very simple and light way to get up and running and benchmarking your games to see how well your system is performing. So hopefully you learned something in this tutorial. Hey Jack. Uh, and if you like what you saw and you wanna see more videos like this where I maybe go over some software that might just be useful to the average person uh, or even just somebody that is a little bit of an enthusiast and wants to see exactly how well their computer is performing in a whole number of different tasks, go ahead and give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment. Uh, and let me know really what kind of benchmarking software are you using for your rig if that's the sort of thing you're into. Of course, you can always follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. I'll leave the, the tag somewhere down here as well. And of course, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.